See, but God goes beyond presentation. He goes, God goes beyond the flesh. He goes beyond the natural. God looks, God gets deep down into the heart. God says, if I'm going to clean you up, I'm not going to touch your clothes. I'm not touching your hair. You hear what I'm saying? God said, no, how I clean you up, I touch you from the inside. And when I touch you from the inside, you'll clean the outside yourself. <laughs> You're now tuned into the world of Kingdom, Kingdom Vision, Vision Christian, Christian Center, Center with Pastor Kevin Brown. Equipping and empowering God's people as instruments of righteousness where your freedom in Christ makes the difference in your life. Now for today's message. Verse 22, professing, Romans 1, 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. I just advise you to get the first CD, okay? And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own what? So we see here, what I'm going to point out this morning, we see here again, we emphasize it, that there is a lust that has to deal with the flesh. Do you understand? We talk about every now and then, we talk about a spirit of lust, but that's not what we're dealing with this morning. We're dealing with a lust that comes from your own flesh. Or let's say, when we use this word flesh, we're talking about old man. Say old man. Old man. Or sin nature. Say sin nature. sin nature. So there is a lust that comes from the sin nature. There is a lust that comes from the old man, which is the same thing. Old man, sin nature. Okay? Is that okay? Yeah. Or in other words, the flesh. When we talk about the flesh, for the most part in this in this teaching, we're talking about the old man or the sin nature. All right? So we see these desires. This word lust, this word lust means um, desiring that which is what? Forbidden. Um, it talks about um, desiring, or another word for this is uh, yearning, uh, but it's not for anything good. It's the desiring things that are not good, desiring things that goes against the word of God. How many of you what I'm saying? This is what we're dealing with. This is not outside of you. This is in you. This, is the, this comes from the sin nature. Do you understand? A lot of times we want to blame the devil. You know, like I said the Wednesday night, we want to blame the devil for everything. And not realize that a lot of these things that we are desiring is coming from you, yourself. It's coming from the old self. It's coming from the old nature, the old you. Now, the Bible tells us what to do with that old self. The Bible tells us what to do with the flesh. It tells us to crucify it. <laughs> what, what, what did he tell us to do with it? Tells us, well, he tells us to do what? Crucify what? The flesh. The flesh is the old you. It is that part of man that's supposed to be buried. You know, we, we every, raise your hand if you've ever been baptized by water. Went to the church. Pastor, you know, grab you and put you under the water and then bring you back up, that's really symbolic. You know that, right? That does nothing for you. <laughs> that does nothing for you. Okay, all right, all right. It does something for you. It, 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 it gets you wet. But sooner or later, you know you dry off. <laughs> I mean, is that what I'm saying? 
Baptism, whether baptism is symbolic. <coughs> it is symbolic to what the scriptures declares as to what happens to a person when they receive Christ. But you have to receive Christ first. So there has to be, there has, there has to be a death of the old man and a resurrection of the new man. Once that happens to you by faith, then you get baptized by water. Because baptism by water is just an outward showing of what has already taken place on the inside. Most of the time, we do it the opposite way. Nothing has taken place on the inside. Nothing. But we put more trust in the ceremony. We put more faith in the ceremony to do the work. But that never does the work. Christ does the work. <laughs> Are you listening to me? That's why he told Nicodemus, Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews. He was already religious. He was, did you hear what I said? He was already? He was already? Religious. He came to Jesus by night. Rabbi, master, teacher. <laughs> we know you came from God. For no man can do the things that you have done except he what? Came from God. Jesus said, Jesus paid that no attention. He trying to give Jesus a big head. Jesus didn't pay no attention to any of that. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. He didn't say be baptized. He didn't say, he never told Nicodemus, go dip in the water. But that's what I'm saying. He said, Nicodemus, you must be born of the water and of the spirit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You must be born of what? The water and of the spirit. Water is symbolic to God's cleansing power. And his spirit is what, what recreates us. His spirit recreates the man. Because man is, a, man is a spiritual being. This is what man is, okay? If you don't know who you are, or what is your makeup? I'm explaining to you right now. Man is a spiritual being. Man is a what? Man is a what? Man is a what? Right. Man is a spiritual being. Man is not male nor female. Man is a spiritual being. That's what man is. He possesses a soul and he lives in a what? So man is not the body. The body is what he lives in. Kevin is not, listen, my house is not me. The house I go home to and I live in, that's not me. The house is not me. I am not the house. I live in the house. You live in the house. Your physical body is a house. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So when you look at your flesh in the mirror, you're looking at the house. Your soul, I like to call it this, the soul is what makes you who you are, um, it spices you. It's almost like when you make a, you make a pot of stew beef or nobody wants fresh food. I don't like to eat fresh food. I got to season it. So your soul is like the seasoning to who you are. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It, 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 what gives you character, personality. You understand what I'm saying? So your soul is what gives you character, personality. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's different. We all have a soul. It's the color for you. It's what colors you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you buy a coloring book and you see the pictures, right? But you got to color the pictures in to give it character, to give it meaning, to make it alive to you. You see what I'm saying? Well, God gave a man a soul. His soul, and his soul possesses his will, his intellect, his ability to think, his consciousness, and his subconsciousness. Did you hear what I just said? That's the soul of a man. And then again, the spirit of a man is who he is. Man is spirit. 
The Bible says, in the beginning, God created man. God took man out of himself. Man, the spirit, is the essence of God. In other words, he was created to look just like God. You look just like God in spirit when you're born again. You look just like God in spirit. Now, so man is a spirit. He possesses a soul and he lives in a house. The house is the body. Even Satan, even Satan said it in 12, in Matthew 12 and 43. You may write that down for, for example. Write down Matthew 12, 40, 12 and 43. Even, said, even the Bible says um, in Matthew 12 and verse 43, when an unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walketh through what? Dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he said, then the demon says, then the evil spirit says, I shall go back to my house from whence I came out of. Who is he talking about? The body. I will go back unto my house from whence I came out. See, why? Because spirits, demonic forces, look to live in a body. In other words, outside of a body, they are illegal. Outside of a body, they cannot do anything. So in order for them to act, in order for them to make themselves known, they need to live in a body. So they can demonstrate. So they can communicate. But they communicate through the body just like you communicate through your body. <laughs> you better hear what I'm saying this morning. So now, so you realize that you are not the body. Because Satan wants to live in the same house you're living in. <laughs> That's right. Now, so man is a spirit, he possesses a soul, and he lives in a body. So what, how, did we, how, how, did, how did we come up with a male and a female? Well, male, as far as the male gender is concerned, and the female gender, is what God calls physical manifestation. God took man the spirit, and when he put him on the physical earth, he gave man, he made man a male, man the spirit, a male, and man the spirit, a female. So man the spirit's physical manifestation is male and female. But there's only one spirit. Man. Man the spirit. God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Well, what is God, what is God like? God is spirit. See what I'm saying? In the book of St. John, chapter 4, verse 24, it says, God is a God is a God is a Well, spirit will produce spirit. God's, God took man out of himself. So if God took man out of himself, man has to be spirit. So now, when we're dealing with this old man, we're dealing with the the, the flesh, we are dealing with the, the, the old nature. And Paul identifies this old nature or old man as a, sin, as a sinful body. It's not a body, but he calls it a body. That's why he says this body has to be buried. This old man has to be what? Buried. Has to be what? Buried. buried, right. He says... Now, when you bury this old man, you must reckon yourself to be dead. The old man, the sin nature, the old you is now what? Dead. And you are now alive unto God. Now, all that is done by the Spirit of God. None of that is done naturally. You understand what I'm saying? None of that has anything to do with what we can perceive to be natural. But as a result, as a result of this new creation and the old man being dead, you become new. Not just in word, but in action. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You follow me. So, you know, I went down a wet devil and came back up a wet devil. 
I went under the water, and I came back up under the water. I take baths and go under the water. I go in the water, I come out of the water. That don't clean you. That clean you physically, but it doesn't clean you spiritually. Are you see what I'm saying? See, that's the flesh. So when we do that, when we, when we perform water baptism, that doesn't save you. You're already saved. <laughs> That's why you get baptized. It's an outward showing of what has already taken place in your heart by the Spirit of God. Other, outside of that, you know, you're depending on what you did for salvation and not what he did. You're not going to stand before God and tell God, well, God... The, the pastor put me under the water <laughs> and brought me back up. <laughs> and I thought I was okay. Yes, but you didn't change. There was no change in your life. You went, out, you went down a wet devil and you came up a wet devil. You went down as a drunk and a homosexual and a fornicator, but you came back up a fornicator, a homosexual, and a drunk. So everything that was done to you was done on the outside. Nothing was done on the inside. <laughs> you better hear what I'm saying. Look at, look at, look at Brother James over there. He's cracking up over there. <laughs> you know, I mean, think about it. You know, a lawyer once said, you know, I was dealing with this lawyer one time, right? And he said, um, you know, guys who get convicted or, you know, up on charges, right? He says, in the cell, they dress one way. But when they, go, when they appear before the court for their trial, we want to make them look different. We want to put a pair of pants on them, slacks, shirt, and a tie. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Why? Because we, we want the judge and the jury, listen, when, we, when the jury puts their eyes on them, we don't want them to see what we know. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm, listen to me now. We, we want to comb their hair, make them look decent, you know, because, you know, when it, once the jury gets their eyes on him, we don't, we don't want them to see a lifestyle um, that, that, that's going to convict them. <laughs> so we want to make him look like something that he's not. We can do that in the flesh. <laughs> you better hear what I'm saying. All the time, they won't wear their pants all the way down here. All you see is their underwear. They wear their hair like it's sloppy looking. Like they'll never comb it. They have this look, this image. The image of the system, the, in, the image of the streets. And then you got to pick a jury. Listen, you got to pick a jury, but these juries, these jury people, these jurors that you're picking, they're hardworking people. They got a job. <laughs> they pay taxes. You understand what I'm saying? They have children. And those lawyers are smart. They know exactly what kind of jurors they want, depending upon the case. But the point I'm making is that when these jurors sit down in, in the courtroom, your first impression is going to be your best impression. And the lawyers know that. Especially, especially the defending lawyer that has to defend you, try to get, trying to get you off these charges, he's going to say, okay, you can't go into court like that. I know you, want, I know you think you're hard, and, and I know you want to you know, portray the street look, but if you go in there, <laughs> if you go in there looking like that, I can guarantee you that jury already judged you just by the way you look. Now, you might be innocent. But based on how you look, they're going to they're say you're guilty. Before they even hear the, the plain, before they even hear the plaintiff, the prosecutor, or the defender. Pre presentation. See, but God goes beyond presentation. He goes, God goes beyond the flesh. He goes beyond the natural. God looks, God gets deep down into the heart. God said, if I'm going to clean you up, I'm not going to touch your clothes. I'm not touching your hair. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. God said, no, how I clean you up, I touch you from the inside. 
And when I touch you from the inside, you'll clean the outside yourself. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because you can misinterpret what you see on the outside. Come on, man. Think about it. You're up on charge and you're facing life in prison for being a drug dealer. And you done been caught three, four, five times. You think you come in there, you think, you think the jury going to have compassion on you? And you come in there with a, with a spliff on your ear and, and, and your pants all the way down here, you busting the sag, everybody see your drawers, and then you got a t-shirt and you got tattoos over your arms. So they're going to be intimidated just by the way you look. They're going to be intimidated just by the way you look in the court. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And they're going to judge you based on your appearance. They're going to judge you. God is so good. God sees the heart. He sees the condition of it. And he, he deals with that. Get a man to change himself on the outside. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You know, that's why when I look at some of my, my ladies, and especially my ladies, I look at some of how, how they dress sometimes. So provocative. You know, you got to get God in them. And when they get God inside, they become God-minded. The Spirit of God begins to deal with them on how they're supposed to conduct and dress and look. The Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit. He says here, verse, what verse are we on, y'all? I got lost. What verse? Okay, verse 23. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image. Made like to what? Corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to vile uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator? who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. But even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. You know what that is? Talking about homosexuality. This is God's judgment, and I talked about this Wednesday. God's judgment. See, most people look for God to strike them dead. Yeah, no, don't stand next to me because lightning about to strike you. Because, boy, you're doing wrong. That's not how... <laughs> that's, not, that's not the character of God. I said that's not the character of God. Hold your spot and turn, let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to confirm. Turn to uh, Isaiah chapter 11. I think it's Isaiah chapter 11. See the five... Or 11. Let's go to Isaiah 11 first. This just came to me. So give me some leeway here. Isaiah chapter 11. Look at 11 right quick. Isaiah 11. Let me show you what I'm referring. It might be 11. No, it's not 11. It's, um, it is, uh, yeah, it is 5. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Keep Keep Romans now, but go to, go to um, Isaiah chapter 5. Initially I said 11, but it's not 11, it's 5. I knew it was one of the two. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you the mind of God. I'm going to show you how God operates. That's what I'm about to show you. You have it? You have uh, chapter Isaiah chapter 5? 
When you get it, say amen. amen. Okay, look at five. It says, now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard and a very fruitful hill. And he fenced it and gathered out the what? Stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it. Now, I'm going to break it down for you after I read it. In the midst, and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein. And he looked, listen to this, and he looked that it should bring forth grapes and it brought forth what? Wow. It brought forth what? Wow. Come on, y'all. It brought forth what? Wow. Wow. Okay. And now, O oh, inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, you judge. Judge, I pray you, between me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? When therefore, when for, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth what? What did it bring forth? And now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away, I will take away, I will take away the what? The heads thereof. And this shall be what? eaten up and break down the wall thereof and it shall be what? Trodden down. And I will lay it what? Waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged but there shall be come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no more. That no rain what? Will rain upon it. For the vineyard listen to this for the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is what? The house of Israel. He's not talking about plants. He's talking about his own people. And what he's saying, he said, listen, I've given you everything that you need for success and to prosper. He said, I planted it. In other words, I planted you. You, are, you became the choicest vine I planted you. And then I stood back and looked that you should yield or bring forth fruit. And the fruit that you brought forth was not what I planted. He said, I looked at grapes should come forth and wild grapes came forth. He said, I know what I'm going to do. He said, I'm just going to back off of you. Because you want to do things the way you want to do things. So what I'm going to do, the heads that I placed around you, I'll just remove it. See, the hedge is God's protection. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 91. You have just heard from the world of Kingdom Vision Christian Center with Pastor Kevin Brown, located at 1945 Beast Ferry Road in Charleston. You can also visit us at www.kvchristiancenter.com and like us on Facebook. Remember, Your freedom in Christ makes a difference in life.